Hi, how's it going? I'm just sitting up here. Let me see if I can invite some people. Do you want some music <laughs> while I invite some people? True to form. Here we go. What should I sing today? Ooh, do you know that song, Love for Sale? Love for sale. Appetizing young love for sale. Do, 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 for a trip to paradise, love for sale. Bum, 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 let the poets write of love in their foolish ways. Something, 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 all their days, oh. Old love, new love, every love but true love for sale. Okay, I know you love it when I sing and I don't know all the words. <laughs> all right, I'm telling a bedtime story. And this is a story actually that I have told... <clears throat> I've told a few times, sometimes I tell them in my classes, by the way, my name is Alexandra Loves. I am a love attraction coach. I'm an intuitive healer and spiritual guide. And you know what, really what I do is I tell, teach women to get what they want by being exactly who they are. It's my favorite thing to do is what I am passionate about. All right, so, hmm. I've told this story before. I sometimes tell them in my classes. It's a little bedtime story. It's a little informal today. I'm sitting here in my bed all wrapped up <clears throat> and uh, I want to talk to you today about turning $25 into $2,500. This is an experience I had and it's fitting for right now because this is the time of year when we're making our resolutions. When we make those resolutions, we're, we're basically saying we're going to manifest this thing this year. And sometimes it's like an actual thing. Sometimes it's, it's a feeling. Sometimes it's a, it's a new behavior. Whatever it is, we're going to manifest it. So, years ago, I was working for some people, and already, like, look, I mostly work for myself and will be full-time working for myself very soon. Uh, I don't like to work for people. I don't like to be building other people's dreams and not my own. I don't like people making, uh, I, I don't like people making decisions for me. I like to be the lead in my own life and that's how I'm, I'm building my life and I teach other people to do that. Anyway, during this time, I was working for someone else and um, I, was, I was taking care of kids and those people ended up moving to uh, San Francisco. And so my nanny ship here in Oregon was over. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I was coming towards the end of that time in my life where I just I just didn't want to work for kids anymore. I didn't want to babysit anymore or nanny anymore. And um, but nonetheless, I found myself in that position. And so, and so, during those last two weeks, I worked for them. For some reason, I couldn't engage with getting my uh, my resume out to other nanny ships because or to other, you know, families, because I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I just didn't want to work on, uh, you know, building other people's dreams and, and helping with, you know, there's only so far you can go as a nanny. Let's just put it like that. There's only so far you can go. So I was in San Francisco and I had almost no money in my bank account and I had been shorted on a paycheck. Uh, and, and I didn't have any jobs coming up. I had gone to Lyft and Uber at that time. I had a small car with only two seats in the back and you can't drive with two seats in the back. So I didn't know quite what to do. I had, I had teaching, I had a teaching resume. I had a theater resume. I had, I'd been on stage for many years, but I, I seriously was standing in a place where I was like, not liking my job, getting shorted on paychecks, um, having almost no money in my bank account, even if they did pay me what I was asking for, which was very low. Now that I've built my life the way it is, I realized I was asking for almost nothing for all, putting my blood, sweat, sweat and tears into raising somebody else's life. I was asking for nothing. Um, and I just didn't know. And I also had my coaching business, but it was just in those beginning stages where 
um, I, I didn't have the consistency and the know-how and the vision to to create like constant inflow into my uh, you know into my bank account so I just did not know what was coming and I also was not hopeful about what was to come and I felt powerless about what I could create and I honestly I said this before but I, I often feel when I'm working for other people I, I feel like I'm powerless a lot of the time because they make the decisions of whether I stay or go and they make the decisions of how much I make and they make the structure in which I create my my prosperity and, and from where I draw my resources so there I was, not wanting to get a job, not liking the job I was, I had, not having the money, feeling powerless, standing in the Hate Street District. Now let me tell you about the Hate Street District. A lot of you know where that is and what it's like, and and from what I've heard, it's cleaned up a lot in the last like you know ten years. But um, the Hate Street is this amazing place in San Francisco that it has a, a lot of really cool stores and and hostels and. Uh, great places to eat and it's really uh, I guess there's a bohemian feel there There's also a lot of people on the street on tweaking out and um, It's the place to go and and you know There's lots of places in San Francisco to go buy pot, but there's there's a lot of places to go buy drugs there and it's I'm walking around and all I wanted to do was just Curl up in a ball and just you know, I had a lot of co confrontation of that. I would end up there which which ultimately is not where I'm going or where I'd end up. But that fear of the not having the money and the resources and not feeling empowered that I could create that for myself made me feel like like I was gonna end up like these people on the street, bless them, but that's not where I wanted to end up. And so I'm gonna bring this back to what we're talking about today and that's the resolution, manifesting a resolution. So that for the next three days, I knew that if I was gonna get my paycheck it was in San Francisco that when I came back to Oregon, because I was I was there helping a, a family in San Francisco, I knew that when I got back to Oregon, that that paycheck was going to cover my rent and the next bill. And then after that, I had bills rolling in. See, when you start out with debt, you just have bills constantly rolling in. They just don't stop. Um, and they grow. So, so um, I remember standing in the hate street district knowing that i had no prospect of of where i was going to go and i decided that for those three days as i was watching these people on the hate street i was looking at my bank account and i was going wow if i pay everything off i'll have 25 dollars when i get home no job to go to no money coming in i, I don't know what i'm going to do and i seriously i stood there on that street and i was like well I can make a decision and here are the two decisions I can make. I'm not going to end up like the people on the street, bless their souls. And there's going to be money in my bank account. There, I'm going to be taken care of. I commanded that I'm going to be taken care of. I get this. Okay. So that was it that I just made the command. I just decided that this is what I was manifesting. I was resolved to do it. After that, I got off the subject, and that's really important. When you are trying to manifest something, when you want to make something happen, say it and then get off the subject because what comes up is all the resistance of like, I can't, I don't know where I'm going to go, the money, the bills won't stop rolling in. I, all that stuff is just, it's just fodder. It's just extra resistance. It's real. Don't ignore it, obviously, but you want to spend your time on what feels good to you. So what I did for the next three days in the Haight-Ashbury district was the last three days of work, was I just decided to raise my vibration. That's it. I didn't think about how I was gonna get taken care of. I didn't think about how, uh, I didn't spend any time on the fact that I didn't know where I was going. All I did was concentrate on my mood. That's it. I knew I was gonna have $25 by the time I got back, no prospects, not knowing where it was gonna come from. And for three days, I walked around with this little kid hanging out in San Francisco, and I just looked for happiness. I, and let me tell you, in those last three days, I had just enough money so I could buy like half a sandwich, like a half sandwich or, you know, cause I had to feed myself. I was 
by the end, by the time I got back on my plane to Oregon, I was so happy. And I knew all the circumstances. I knew that I was going back to like buy cat food, pay my rent and the next bill. And I'd have $25 in my bank account. And I did. By the time I got back, it was like a Thursday. I paid everything I needed to do. I fed my, my felines. They are a priority. They're my spirit animals. And I sat and I was like, I'm, that's it. I'm just going to work on, on my happiness. And tomorrow I'm going to figure something out. The tomorrow was Friday and during that weekend, uh, I, I had launched a program that didn't go anywhere cause I didn't understand marketing back then, <laughs> but it was still like on my website and I talked a couple, to a couple people about it. Um, by that Friday, a couple more people had reached out to me and I was like, kind of like easily figuring out what I was going to do about my situation. I it wasn't, I wasn't, you know, holding on to it like, ah, I don't know what to have like six more days before another bill hits. You know, I didn't do that. I just was like, some things I'm taking care of. I commanded that and I'm in a good mood. It's coming in. And by the end of that Friday, two people had signed up for my a program. And the funny thing was, it wasn't people that I had reached out to. It was random. It was just like they were sent out of nowhere. Um, the next day, uh, a couple approached me to give me a job that didn't start for six months. And they decided that they loved the quality of my work so much that they wanted to pay me a retainer so that I didn't take that same job with somebody else. And not only did they pay me a retainer that lasted, that was every week from then until when I started the job, they paid me two weeks in advance because they knew I had just gotten off a last job. So I got this other big chunk of money. That was on the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, I got something else in the mail and I, I really can't recall what it was. So by the end of that weekend, I went into that weekend feeling power. First, I felt powerless. I had nothing. I didn't know. I kept getting rejected from, you know, from Lyft and Uber. I couldn't get my car approved to work for them. I, I had no, I felt, I felt like I was in that desperation mode. I thought I was going to end up homeless. You know, I went on that whole rabbit hole of, of failure. I knew I was going to have, I was getting shorted on paychecks. I knew I was going to have $25 left to my name. And what I did was command that I'm taken care of and I will have resources. And then I worked on my mood. That's it. I just knew that I was worthy of feeling happy and joyful and was giggling by the time I got back, even though there was no funds in my bank account. By the end of that weekend, I went from $25 to $2,500. But into that weekend, I had a job I knew I was going to. Not only had I manifested that money, but part of the agreements of how that money came in was people who paid me to not work. They paid me weekly a good amount of money to not work for six months. And also, I knew that I still was trying to pay some stuff off. The person who had introduced me to the ride-sharing company, I told them, like, yeah, it didn't work out. They said, hey, you know what? And this is right after that weekend. They said, hey, you know what? Why don't we just share a car and you can just give me this little small fee and you can, you can make money with my car. Just a random person I had met. They had driven me to the airport when I went to San Francisco earlier. So the point is, my point is, is that, look, I'm about to do a, manif a free manifestation class in my, in my group, Woke Woman Cultivation. It starts tomorrow. It, it goes on and on. So you can join it anytime if you want. Um, I hear from people all the time, like, how am I going to make this thing happen that's not here yet, right? And it can be daunting, right? Because say what it is that you want is, is like the soulmate, right? You know, I'm, I'm a love coach, so, so I talk to a lot of people about love. You really have to match the vibration and acknowledge and understand the resistance before that thing comes. It's on the inside before it happens on the outside. That will always be true. So when you're doing your resolutions at the beginning of this year, 2018, oh my God, when you're doing your resolutions, when you're looking at your resolutions and you want to manifest them, the most important thing to know is that, yeah, if you want something that's really big, if you have a big desire, the chances are that you might have resistance around it. That's probably why the desire is so big in the first place. So instead of telling the story that you can't have it, 
because it's not here yet or because of all the reasons on paper in front of you that, that say that you can't have it, instead of going there with your mind, just command that you have it. I have that soulmate, right? Because that's, that's the example. I have that soulmate. And then when all this stuff comes up about like, I never find love, everybody has it except for me, everybody on Facebook seems happy and I'm not. <laughs> Instead of getting caught up in those stories, which is your past, by the way, which is culture, which is what we're fed to believe, which is fear, instead just observe that they're real and be okay with it. Those things are real for me. All right, I'm gonna have my soulmate anyway. I'm not gonna get involved with the story of all of that stuff. I'm going to, in this present moment, I love present moment intimacy, in this moment, I'm gonna acknowledge those things and still be happy about something else in my life. I'm gonna raise my vibration anyway, and I still command that I have my soulmate. It's okay to do that. It's okay to manifest something even if you have resistance, to manifest something and you can manifest something even if there's resistance present. Just observe it. It doesn't have to be the story you live by. It doesn't have to drive your life. And the other thing is, you gotta take all of you with you, friends. If you have resistance, like when I was manifesting that money, when I was turning that $25 into $2,500, if I had ignored that part of me that was like, I'm gonna end up on the streets of San Francisco, like all these, all these tweakers around me. If I had, if I had ignored that part of me, it just would have come back louder in some other way, shape or form. And instead I just acknowledged that that was real. That is a real fear for me. And it's okay that this is a real fear. It's just part of my past, it's, it's in there. That's part of who I am. And that part of me is coming with me towards what I'm manifesting. And I manifested that $2,500. So that's the little bedtime story that I wanted to tell you about when I manifested that money. <laughs> and you know, you already are a master manifester. You're born to do it. Sometimes you manifest things like that and sometimes it takes a little time. So when you're thinking about your resolutions, just know that even if it feels like a fucking fairy tale, the thing that you're manifesting, you still can have it. Just bring all of you with you. That's it. All right, friends. Have a great night. I will see you tomorrow.